what's up guys good morning happy new year and welcome back to another video still working on the s13 and we're trying to get its first start basically i kind of dumbed it down to it's a few related issue as to why it's not starting the reason why i am saying that is because i sprayed some brake clean into the throttle body and i was able to fire it up for about a second or two before it died down so what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be replacing the fuel pump and I'm going to be testing for fuel pressure. Fuel is coming to the engine. So in a way that tells me that the fuel pump is working properly. But at the same time, every time I go to start the car, I never hear the fuel pump priming. But we're going to be replacing it just in case. I've also got a fuel pressure tester kit. So I'm going to be testing out the fuel pressure and seeing what it's reading for the swab. It's supposed to be reading right around 50, uh, 50 PSI of pressure. So. We're gonna test that out and see. Really hoping to get the first start in today. Um, if the fuel pump doesn't work and if the fuel pressure is fine, I'm gonna start uh, tearing the top end apart, looking at the fuel injectors and looking at the fuel rail, make sure everything is okay. I probably should have done that when the motor was out and I already had all of this off the car, but you know, it's whatever, it's on now. I just wanna get the car started. So hopefully today is that day. All right, guys just got done putting the fuel pump in here it is got the wires uh crimped together and stuff one thing i did notice though is if you compare the size of this fuel pump to the old one <laughs> you see that difference the old one is much much bigger so i'm not sure um if this is from like a different car um i'm not sure if it's interchangeable with a different car or not definitely a giant difference <laughs> right there but let's hope that this one works uh let's go ahead and put it back in the car and try to start it up right, so uh i'm putting the fuel tank back not the fuel tank but the fuel pump back in right now this o-ring right here it expanded so now it is way too big and i cannot fit this back on correctly so i called around to a couple of um car parts stores around here and i finally found one at napa auto parts and can you guys imagine how much that freaking little o-ring is 23 goddamn dollars 23 dollars for an o-ring so you know what i'm about to do go spend 23 dollars and buy it let's go just got back from napa auto parts and yes this stupid o-ring was 25 freaking dollars i swear this better last like 10 15 years oh my god i, I cried a little bit buying this but yeah let's go ahead and slap that on finish up the pump install and then hope for a first start all right guys i got the fuel pump back in and i got everything um back in its place as you can see so now i'm going to go ahead and reconnect the negative battery terminal and try for the first start moment of truth guys about to pop the key in and turn the ignition oh see i definitely heard the fuel pump this time hey still nothing eh i definitely heard the fuel pump prime this time because before uh, I would never hear the fuel pump priming like I was telling you guys. I wouldn't hear it prime, but I was getting fuel to the motor, which was what I found weird. So now I definitely do hear the fuel pump priming, but we still are not getting any start. So now we gotta do some other diagnostics and see exactly what's going on. Um, I do still wanna test my fuel pressure. Like I said earlier, this was cross-threaded, so I wasn't able to get the right fitting on there. And I didn't go and swap it out with hope that the fuel pump was gonna fix the issue. I do still wanna test the fuel pressure, so I'll probably go swap that test kit out for another one and see what happens. All right guys, took a trip down to O'Reilly, swapped the test kit out. I actually brought back both kits as you can see and I just finished getting this hooked up right here and I have the gauge running right down here. I have it on the windshield. So we're gonna go ahead and try to start this one more time. Let's see how much fuel pressure we are getting. Uh, 
All right. Either I didn't connect it right or we are getting zero fuel pressure. Yep. That's definitely it. Either I did not connect it right or we're getting zero fuel pressure. The next day. I'm sorry I cut you guys short yesterday. We were just doing a lot of stuff. My homie Greg came through um, and he's like super, super knowledgeable when it comes to cars and diagnosing issues with him. And yeah, we we're here for like an hour or two. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of the whole time he was here, but we did get the car to start for a little bit, probably for like five, six seconds. We did get it to start um, while spraying, brake cleaning the throttle body. That was the only time we got to start. We got to kick on a couple of times. It would die down every single time. What we did figure out is that the reason why I kept dying off is because my fuel pump, it'll turn on and then it'll turn right back off. So that is the main issue that we're having right now. So basically um, what we figured out that I could do is I can just wire my fuel pump to a switch and then that way I could just flip the switch up, start the car up and the fuel pump will stay on. Another thing is that my throttle relay, I think I told you guys before, I have it unplugged because it just completely ripped off all the wires and I didn't know how to, how to connect that back. So I've been talking to Hexa Garage. He told me what I have to do and which wire goes where. So we're gonna be plugging that all in. Gonna be putting in a lot of work today. Hopefully today is the day that we get the car to start. All right guys, so I just got done hooking up the throttle relay right here, taught the Hexa, and he uh, showed me how to hook it up correctly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start the car, or try to start the car at least, and let's see what happens. But we hooked up the, the fuel pump power to the tail lamp. So whenever I press on the brake, it engages the fuel pump and that's how it's turning on right now. Oh, I think my battery's dead. Come on, baby, give me some. Nothing. If I just run to the gas station and get some gas and put it in here real quick, it does have gas, but it has like a little bit under a quarter tank. So I'm gonna just pump a little bit in there, see if it makes a difference at all. I know that my fuel bump is turning on every single time now. I can hear it priming since we have it connected to the brake light. So every time I press on the brakes and I flip the ignition to on, I hear it priming in the back. So we know it's getting fuel. We tested that out yesterday. I know it's getting spark. We tested that out yesterday also. Uh, the battery is charged now. We just tried it. We saw it cranks, but it still does not start. So yeah, I'm gonna go get some fuel, put it in, and we'll see if that makes a difference at all. All right, guys. So I just got back from the gas station, pumped a gallon of gas in there. I'm gonna test for 12 volts at the injectors real quick, just to double check and make sure that they are getting voltage. If they're not getting voltage, we know that that's the problem right there. All right. So you can see right there, I am getting right around 12 volts. So that is good we are getting power to the injectors so i guess we're gonna try to fire it up one more time and see what happens still nothing all right guys so at this point i'm like really really lost uh i don't know what to do anymore like i said we tested for spark yesterday that's good we have fuel fuel pump is priming the battery's charged now throttle relay is connected and uh i test the fuel pressure and I'm getting zero fuel pressure, even though I have fuel and the fuel pump is priming. It just doesn't make any sense to me as to why I'm getting zero fuel pressure. I've been here trying to figure out what could be wrong with it. Still nothing. Uh, like I said earlier, um, I am getting fuel into the fuel pressure regulator and I'm getting fuel out of the fuel pressure regulator into the rails, but I'm getting zero PSI uh, of fuel pressure when I test. I don't know if the test kit that I got is just bad and it's reading zero because it's bad or if I'm actually getting zero PSI. I've talked to a, a few people, a lot of people actually, and we're kind of all stuck on as to why this is happening. About to call it a day. We'll probably continue tomorrow. Three days later. Wow.
Let's go! Wow! It started. I can't wait for the first second that I get to drive this thing. I know. How many hours have I spent on this car the past couple hours? weeks? Hours? I don't even know. Gosh. Probably like you wake up, start like at 10 or 9, and he doesn't come back inside till like probably eight. How exciting is that? The second I get to drive it, oh, we're gonna we're gonna teach her how to slide in this car. What do you guys think about that? Should we make a video teaching her how to drift in the VQ40? I'm down. Hella down. But we gotta teach you how to drive stick first. I know how to drive stick. I'm just like. When I was like 14, so it's been it's a few been years. years yeah. Damn, it's been almost 10 years. So, first, we're gonna teach her how to drive stick, not teach her, but give her a refresher. And then, uh, wait, what the hell were you doing driving at 14? That's my dad. <laughs> Man, y'all know how to use a Spanish. I was parents learning speak. how to uh, drive stick in a Mustang, and it was, I don't know, I thought it was harder. Then when I drove your last 40, your first 40. Oh yeah, I let her drive my first 240 and she drove it fine. No problem. I let her drive the G one time, but that was a different story. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you guys that story well, another day. Well, you took me on the biggest street of Ohio. So During rush hour. Nervous. During rush hour, it was like 4 or 5 o'clock, middle of the day. Pull around like one of the busiest streets. It didn't go that well. But it was a fun story. I'll tell you guys that one day. One day, yeah. Guys, she freaking started that is so amazing so still got a lot of stuff to do um i still gotta get the drive shaft made i still gotta get an exhaust made i still gotta set up some of my power steering stuff i took all of this off because i was um replacing the o2 sensors and i had to remove the headers in order to get to them so yeah i gotta put that that stuff back i still want to clean up the harness a little bit more I definitely still got to take care of the interior but the biggest and most important part is that she started and Oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm probably just gonna start it one more time. Just just start it. You guys wanna hear it? It's so loud! So I can't finish out the video without telling you guys exactly what was wrong with the car. So uh, as you guys saw throughout this video, I replaced one thing, I replaced another, I replaced another and we had no luck. Everything from the fuel pump uh, to testing injectors, testing for spark, testing uh, to see if we're getting fuel, all of that stuff. Everything was good and we could not figure out what the hell the issue was. The issue was my fuel pressure regulator right here. The body was okay. But the regulator up top, um, the one that came with this was for a E46 BMW. The E46 BMW regulator, the bottom piece is skinnier than this one. The one that I'm using now is from a Audi A4. So Radium, the, their previous body of fuel pressure regulators, it used the E46 style regulator. Um, but they had recently switched over to the Audi style and we were unaware of that when we put it in I got all of this from Hexa and Hexa was unaware that they had um, Changed the style over to the Audi style regulator once we figured that out I swapped it over to this one as you guys saw and it fired right up and the reason why we were able to figure this out is because I ran um, my feed line straight from the hard line straight to the fuel rail and it started right up this was yesterday um i haven't been vlogging the past th two three days that i've been working on the car i haven't been vlogging because i didn't want to just keep vlogging trial and error i just want to go straight to when the car was good not to waste your guys' time watching the video but once we figured that out i ordered the audi pressure regulator put it on fired right up and the car is now good so 
of course there still is a lot of work to do um, I still gotta fill all the fluids of course there's oil in it but I still gotta do all the power steering fluid the um, the coolant all that type of stuff I still gotta get my interior all together and I do want to clean up the harness out in the engine bay a little bit more the biggest part is over with the car officially starts um, the I got the transmission mounts in the day I'm not sure if I showed you guys I think I did but those are in now stay tuned for next video guys I have so much and I mean so much coming for this car I have z32 brakes just sitting in my room that I need to put on I have some hood pins that I'm gonna be installing because of the hood risers and it doesn't latch correctly um, I have full GK tech suspension um, rear camber and tow arms front traction rods um, I have another like GK Tech hood latch type mod and a drift button for the e-brake. I have so much stuff coming for you guys. It's going to be awesome. I'm super excited to see what the future holds for this car. And I'm super excited to just be able to put it on the ground and start driving it. All I really need now is to get the drive shaft made and the car will be ready to be put on the ground. That's freaking exciting. So. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the video and were as excited as I am to get that first start. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, comment something down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until the next video, guys, peace out.